welcome along to our next instalment of our Three Things campaign. And this is three things that landlords need to pay attention to in 2018. And who better to join me than a landlord of 30 years experience, Denise Naylor. And Denise, always a pleasure to have you as a guest on Property Tribes TV. And we've got a new year ahead of us. Many, many challenges facing landlords, isn't there? That's correct. Thank you, Vanessa. Yes. I More legislation? Talk. Oh, I'm sure there will be. Uh, the first thing I would say is try to it, do the best you can with the properties you've got. Because I suspect that the legislation is going to come in now on standards. We've already had e you know, the mm -hmm. heating levels and so on. So if you get a void period, none of us likes a void period, but if you get a void period, use it to do works that will protect your investment. For example, double glazing. Mm -hmm. And that will give you long-term benefit. So, and especially if you're working with agents, I sometimes find the agents don't want me to do works in the void because they really want the, you know, just to bring people and look. But, you know, be prepared. You know a void might come up. Have your builder ready and do some improvement that will have long-term benefit for you mm -hmm. and raise the standard of the property, mm -hmm. not just refurb. Mm -hmm. Secondly, along with my strengthen and protect strategy, have a look at the legal side of your portfolio. Have a look at the tenures. Do you have leasehold properties, for example? Do you have freehold properties? If you have leasehold properties, there might be a potential to buy the lease, the freehold of that block. For example, if you own one and there are two in the block, consider making an approach to the other leaseholder and you know, eventually purchasing within the same block rather than going out and buying something different. What I do is when I go into a block, I immediately contact the person up, the people upstairs. I tend to get the ground floor first for some reason, I don't know quite why. And just say, look, if you're interested, if you're ever interested in buying, even if it's in 10 years time or 20 years time, please, you know, give me first refusal. Mm -hmm. And then I make a point of when I go up to the, plot, the house to see the tenant, I try to go to time when the upstairs people might be around and be friendly, friendly. Well, the first one took 10 years mm -hmm. and the leaseholder upstairs said, Denise, I'm relocating. Do you know anybody who will buy? Yes, I will, thank you. Mm -hmm. Second one took three years. And again, it was because I'd built up rapport, they knew who I was, so they didn't even bother to go to an agent. So I got two private sales that way. And then, of course, I was just going to say, Denise, I, I really like what you said there as well, because um, as a responsible landlord, um, you should be aware of uh, neighbours, and neighbours actually can be very useful to landlords in reporting if there's anything uh, of concern going on at the rental property. Yeah. You've given another dimension to that by suggesting that if you uh, forge relationships with neighbours, that they may come to you if they want to um, sell up and move on. And obviously, that's a great way to generate potential leads. Well, as I said, I've done it twice already. So, um, I, you know, it's works for, it works for me. And thirdly, I would say, have a think about your tenant type. Um, because some of the more unusual tenant types, for example, local authority tenants, you know, the picture's changing. And I think we need to be open-minded to um, maybe changing the type of people. Um, there's a lot of elderly people coming on now. They've sold their family homes. There's an absolute dearth of appropriate housing for the elderly that is not retirement housing or care home there's that intermediate stage and they will be delighted i think to rent you know they will pay their rent they will be very reliable tenants mm -hmm. and but the thing is they can't find prep they can't find properties that have things like a wet room mm -hmm. so what i'm doing is with all my ground floors i'm doing wet room and step free and my builders hate this but mm -hmm. i say no you've got to look in the future so just think about that because it doesn't matter for young people they don't mind either way but it opens up the possibility that you can change your tenant type without having to spend a lot of money. You are ready. You are prepared for the fact that the population is ageing. I'm not referring to myself, of course. <laughs> well, there's been a lot in the media, actually, about yeah. how the... Um, uh, 
more elderly people are going to be going into the private rented sector. Sure. And um, I, I think you'll agree that if you can find a niche and really um, understand that niche, that then that can be v a very good way to go. And I think you're absolutely right. Doing a simple thing like a wet room and maybe putting a, a ramp up um, you know, on, into the property if it had a couple of steps at the front door, all those kind of things can, can just create another uh, ready-made tenants waiting to move in, a, a big demand. Yes, as I say, I haven't done it myself yet, but I'm you know, I'm trying to look forward when I do a little bit of a refurb so that I'm ready for that marketplace mm. when it opens up, because I believe it will open up. Yes, I think you're right. And also, I think on the on the refurb tip, um, if the longer that you leave it to undertake some remedial works or a facelift, if you want to call it that, the more expensive it gets. Um, are you a kind of little and often kind of... Uh, landlord or do you wait until it gets quite serious and then you have to think about a much uh, bigger kind of uh, facelift because I think you know clearly once the property starts to go downhill in its appearance could be you know really badly stained carpets uh, lots of marks on the walls that kind of thing I, I actually believe that it does put tenants off and then you find that the rent starts to reduce and it kind of goes down into a spiral. Well, fortunately, I haven't had that. I haven't actually had that experience. I perhaps I've just been a bit lucky with my tenants. O overall, mm -hmm. I've had a few problems, of course. Everyone has, in that they have kept the property up. Mm -hmm. But um, the answer to your question is, I'm a little and often. Mm -hmm. And I like the way that you said do something that actually Im improves the energy efficiency, like double glazing or something of that nature. So just to close this out, Denise, we're heading forward into 2018. I think we both know there's going to be a lot more challenges. I believe that there's actually going to be some more landlord taxation coming down the, the pipe at us. Um, you're remaining positive. Definitely, Vanessa, yes. You know, I faced a lot of challenges, as have many of your viewers, and uh, no, I'm not ready to give up yet. Well, that's a fantastic <laughs> note to end on. So thank you very much again, Denise. Thank All you. the best for uh, 2018. And um, maybe we'll catch up with you again in, in 12 months' time and see how your strength and protect strategy is going. We'll put a link to the other video that goes into a lot more detail on that topic, which we recorded uh, late last year with Denise. So um, you can go and have a look at that as well. Um, but as always, Denise, uh, you're such a source of information and it's great to talk to you. Thank you, Vanessa.